My name's Rich Harrington, and welcome to our third part in Making Great Selections. This week, we're going to take a look at how to use the color detail in an image and harness a couple of image adjustment commands to quickly turn that into a great alpha. We've got two images we're going to try this out on, and we're going to build on some of the techniques you've already seen. So let's see how fast we can accomplish this. So I've got the image here, and I'm just going to take the channel with the most contrast, which in this case is the blue channel. Notice how the sky is very white and the building is very dark. So we'll go ahead and duplicate that, dragging on the new icon, double click to name it, and we'll call that Alpha. Now what we're going to do here is take advantage of an adjustment called Threshold, Image, Adjustments, Threshold. And this is really the continental divide. As you would drag this here, you are mapping forcing everything on one side to black and the other to white. So as we drag this through here, you see how we could find that balance. Now if we go too far, it starts to get the clouds. So that's okay. Let's just go so the clouds are perfect and we'll click OK. At this point it's done pretty well. I'm going to take the magic wand tool and simply click on the white sky. And we can now choose select inverse. So we've got the selection reversed and we've got the building here and quite simply we could just fill this in. Because I have a selection protecting my outside edges, it's a piece of cake. Hit B for brush, get a nice big brush, D for default and X to toggle, now we're on black, and I could just paint. And notice I could even drag outside here and nothing happens. So just quickly paint that little bit in and you see we've got a great selection. There's my alpha channel. If I need to, I can invert it, of course. And it's a piece of cake. As you need to, you could paint and touch up, but I really think we got it pretty well there. There we go. Command click to load. Select the RGB image. Make sure that it's a layer by double clicking. And if we want to, add the layer mask to see it. And there you have it, some great transparency. Now, that threshold command is a much faster way than using the levels command to just force the mat to black or white. Sometimes levels is going to give you subtleties that are important, but threshold can get the job done pretty quick. Let's try a tougher image. So, what we have here is a green eel on a relatively green coral background, and this is going to be a bit tough. If we look at the channel's details here, we see though that we've got some contrast. Notice the blue channel, not a lot of contrast, but in the green channel, a little bit better, and there's the red. To me, it looks like the green channel can get the job done, so let's go ahead and duplicate that and call that alpha. I'm going to go ahead and apply a very slight Gaussian Blur. Of one pixel, just to soften that out. And now we'll do that adjustments for threshold. Notice as we drag the slider here, we're forcing. And it's not going to be perfect. But remember, you're not going to get perfect the first time through. Let's click OK and go to the RGB channel. And at this point, it's a touch-up job. Remember, if we paint with black, we can go ahead and clean that up. And by viewing the channels together, it gets a little bit easier. One of my favorite shortcuts is to hold down the Shift key as I click here, and you'll see that this connects a straight line. That makes it easier for you to clean things up. In the more open areas here, switch to a bigger brush with the right bracket key, and you can pick up more quickly. You may have to play with your softness slider though by adjusting the brush making it harder or softer to taste as you need to clean up edges. And remember, if you zoom in, it's always easier to see what you're trying to fix. So, we're doing a pretty good job here, getting that edge. 
In this case, the blue is a little distracting. So remember, you can double click on the alpha channel and change its color to make it easier to see how it looks. That's helping us clean up. We're doing a pretty good job here. Let's just quickly work our way through. Pick up some of these stray pixels over here. Again, painting with black to add to the alpha channel. There we go. And let's switch back over to white and fill in some of the rest of that body there. That was a little bit tricky. Now, this will require a little bit of finesse, but you see how we're able to do a pretty good job here if we were trying to make a selection. In this case, I'm trying to isolate the selection of the eel so I could punch up its saturation and contrast. So it doesn't have to be as perfect as a selection that we're trying to do for cutting something out. One way to improve a selection is to often soften it a bit. And my favorite way to do that is by taking advantage of a blur. So with the alpha channel selected, we can go ahead and choose filter, blur, Gaussian blur, and run that at a slight value. In this case, let's do three. If we look closely here at just the alpha channel, you'll see that it has edges. And of course, like anything else, you could touch that up. If you run a levels adjustment on the alpha channel and you move the middle slider, notice how the alpha grows or shrinks. So this makes it easier to refine your alpha channel. That looks pretty good. We'll go ahead here and click the thumbnail to load it, turn it off, and go to the RGB channels. And at this point, we're going to add a hue saturation adjustment layer, which will allow us to change the color of the eel, making it a little bit greener, a little bit darker, and a little less saturated, blending it in. And of course, because it's a hue slider, we can go to any color we want. And that selection is being useful there to target what's happening in the image. So let's go ahead and click OK. So there you have it, two ways to make the selection. We've taken the techniques we've learned earlier and refined them by going after that alpha channel, using things like Gaussian blurs and levels adjustments, as well as the threshold command to push that selection mat exactly where we want it. Once you learn to start to think in channels, you could take significantly better control over Adobe Photoshop. For Photoshop for Video, I'm Rich Harrington, and I invite you to check out the resource blog at photoshopforvideo.com, and of course the book, Photoshop for Video, from Focal Press.